I never met a six-packer billionaire in my life. Never. I never met a 4%, 5%, 6% body fat guy billionaire ever. There aren't any. Yet. Best friends, the Nazis dead, and then that's us at our 50 year high school reunion. Uh, and uh, because I could, I could talk, why, why do we want to volunteer to go in the army when they're dying in Vietnam, uh, you know, uh, by the dozen? It's the right thing to do. Well, why, do you, why should I blow you in, in, in the cab right now, Mr. sir? Because it's the right thing to do, honey. <clears throat> I can convince anybody to do anything. Why should the Kuwaitis back me? They're the third largest oil reserves in the world. Why do we want to build an oil, oil company? It's the right thing to do. I told you before, those of you that have sales skills have an edge. And those of you with higher education have the, whatever the opposite of an edge is. It just pisses me off. You're so stupid. It's pretty obvious, isn't it? I don't feel sorry for you. I pity a dog that gets hit in the street. I don't pity you. And for those of you that are here because you got press, I feel more sorry for you. If you can't come here and you can't tell your family and your wife, you, then something's fucking wrong. Because denial is easier than confrontation. Because you're all cunts. And, unfa and unfortunately, you're your father's son. And your dad was a cunt. Or is a cunt because he's still alive. Better your fathers are dead. I told you one of the greatest attributes I ever had was when I was with the Onassis people. They said, you remind me of Airy. Aristotle Onassis when he was a young man. He lived at one Champs-Élysées in Paris, across the street from the Eiffel Tower, in the attic, where the rats were as big as cats. He always had a tan. He used to sit up on the roof of the piece of tin, you know, you keep your face tan, because he wanted people to think he was on a golf course, a tennis court, or on a yacht. Sound familiar? Perception is reality. Fake it till you make it, as the kids would say. I am that. I'm the closest you will ever come to a superhero, because I make shit happen. Just as when I say I'm gonna fuck you up, I mean it. And if I can't fuck you up with my hands, I'll take a baseball bat. And if a baseball bat doesn't work, I'll take a gun. And if I'm in close, I always carry this. I'll cut your fucking throat. I have weapons all throughout the house. If they get past my security, I'm gonna kill them. And that's the antithesis of you. At the Onassis Group, they said, if you're smart, you're afraid of Mr. Pena. The Vatican said, if you're smart, you're afraid of Mr. Pena. That's not much of an exaggeration of what my dad looked like. My dad's arms were a little bigger. My dad had a 56 inch chest and a 28 inch waist. Never lifted a weight. For all you guys trying to have six packs, it's a joke. I never made a six packer billionaire in my life. Never. I never met a 4%, 5%, 6% body fat guy billionaire, ever. There aren't any. Yet, at least a third of you in this room try. Why is that? If you want to see how I was raised, watch this series on TV, Prodigal Son. It's about a kid that had a psychopath serial killer for a father. Sally says, when we watch it, God, it reminds me of your father, the serial killer that killed 23 people. My dad only allegedly killed nine. I saw my first dead body when I was six, frozen to a log. Death doesn't bother me. I wonder why. And on the other end of the continuum, my parents allowed me to believe in Santa Claus, the Tooth Fairy, and uh, Easter Bunny till I was older than everybody else on the block. I thought there was a Santa Claus long, long time after all the other kids knew there wasn't or knew it was their dad. So I had these two different factions pulling at me. The dead body and the log won out. And there are tough guys that I've trained. The third guy to walk on the moon. They're not all pussies. That guy was a tough guy. I, I, I'm so, I didn't train him. The guy that turned the ship around when they was gonna crash into the Pentagon. So there are people that have some fucking balls. What happened to you? How many times did Gerard said you gotta hold your head up high and have some balls? Five, six times? Do you think he was just bullshitting you? A guy that got shot down in a drive-by, paralyzed from the waist down? This isn't a fucking joke. I'm not up here just to hear my lips flap. There are people with balls. That nun, surgeon turned nun. She was a surgeon doctor, she is a surgeon doctor, turned nun. So there are people out there. Some of the toughest people I've trained are Priests and nuns, why they take a bullet for you, I have no fucking idea. I certainly wouldn't. You're not worthy. Some of my nun friends, they, that nun, the nun second from the right, had never seen the water. We used to go at our house in the Philippines, biggest state. Uh, the nuns used to take it over for a weekend. Now, and we, we had guards, and just, so they would, they would put on bathing costumes, they're called. Uh, I'd like to see some of those. I didn't. I'm sure a couple of our security guards were looking over the fence, but the... Uh... So there are tough people, just not you, yet. They're praying to me, they're the cardinal. Why? Because we gave them a goddamn school in uh, Sri Lanka. I have 240 nuns praying for me minimum every motherfucking day, five times a day. Does it help? I don't know, but I'm doing it. My main squeeze is Sister Superior right there next to the card. Comes from Colombia, where her father and cousins were drug lords. Other guys have balls. A guy played 478 golf tournaments until he won his first here in the Britain a few weeks ago. I have to admit, I would have given up before 478. Just as I would have given up, I wouldn't have done 10,000 experiments like Edison. Fuck, I would have hired some fucking stupid German Nazi fucking, uh, 
a guy from the uh, death camp uh, to come up with a bullshit. I wouldn't do it. So there are people, but you can count them on two hands and your fingers. And you've never met anybody but me. That's a sad commentary. And when the legend becomes fact, you print the legend, which is me. Now, new Hall of Famer just inducted Anelli from South Africa. Well, you're not supposed to be able to do this because it's too corrupt. $32 million in EBITDA in 36 months. 32 million EBITDA in 36 months. You put a multiple on it. Five, eight, 10, 15. Let's just use 10. 325 million bucks he created in 36 months from scratch with no money. And Elliot, if you're watching, this is an exaggeration. He's a little taller than this, a little. So there are guys that come through here that have balls. And a Mexican, ex-sheriff from San Bernardino, Hall of Famer. 100 million since August of 2010. 106 million to be exact. He can tear you down to the penny. He was in that seminar where we had six or seven superstars and I don't know what the fuck I did in August 2010, but I did something because we had a bunch of very successful guys. And celebrated his 16th birthday with a $53 million deal. 16th, he actually did the deal when he was 50. Fucking 15. What have you done, you fucking miserable piece of shit? Nothing, except worry about the Hatsburgs. Do you know how fucking remarkable that is? That's, I am God! God can't do that. Fucking 16. All you were doing was jacking off. At 16, he's Greek. There he is. This was doing when he was getting, you know, he, he, he was asked or he was told, what are all the big hitters doing? And we're going to tell you what the big hitters do. One of which is they turn a room into their war room and they paste all the shit up on the room like he's doing. He was he was uh, 15 and five months there. He looks about nine to me. Just fucking doing. He's from a religious family, Greek Orthodox. Then he went to smell the leather, just like I tell you to do that you're not going to do. You should have done it before you got here. Went to the Rolls dealer. Then he went to look at eight, $10 million houses, just like I tell you to, but you don't do it. You got to get used to it. When I was still in university, when I came back from the Vietnam War, my girlfriend and I used to go look at $2 million houses, which was a lot of fucking house in, in uh, the early 70s, open houses. We used to go to the LAX uh, airport and watch the Pan Am flights coming from Rome, London, Paris, land, and the people getting off. They used to walk off steps in those days. I, w I didn't know I was smelling the leather, but I was smelling the leather. And guess what? 16 years old. You should be fucking ashamed. You should all kill yourself, metaphor, because everybody deserves to live. Fuck you. Everybody doesn't deserve to live. That's horse shit. There he is interviewing an investment ba a banker, Corona, right? The guy's there, and if you can see, we covered his face. To, he's there in a fucking t-shirt, right? The first 20 minutes of the Zoom call, he was apologizing to the kid for looking like a pig. Think about it, assholes. And there's his buddy. You are who you hang around with. Do these guys look like the guys you hang with, that you fucking chill with, as opposed to your mates? You are who you hang around with. You're the product of the five people you spend the most time with. If a 16-year-old kid, and we've had him younger, we've had him 13, because he, he, he wanted to know, am I the younger? No, you're not the younger. We had two brothers, 13 and 15, just barely 15 that came through here back in the 90s. But in recent time, he is the young. Some of you in your paperwork have said, I wish that I had found you earlier. Well, you weren't looking too hard, were you, asshole? Because I've been around 28 fucking years. They come to me either out of inspiration or desperation, and there's no motherfucker that's inspired in this room. Any of your relations there? This is the kid, the guy that did the deal in seven days, Carl. He's not proud of these numbers. He's like, oh, I wish he wouldn't show anybody, because he doesn't think he did any. 32 deals in 24 months. Not a record, but better than a poke in the eye with a sharp stick, isn't it? Considering he probably made a million on the first deal. Excuse me. And we've had him before. Marcus Bauer, 23 deals. One guy, 2019, broke my record. We've had teenage multimillionaires. And so the biggest deal in recorded history, $500 billion. And they all have a few things in common, which we're going to talk about. But they all follow the motherfucking step. How have these kids, and they're all kids to me, because I'm either old enough to be your father or grandfather, uh, done what seems absolutely not possible? And during Corona Rona, I was singing this morning in the shower. Do not forsake me, oh fucking Corona. I sing that all day long. I'm so fucking happy. I don't know whether to shit or go fucking blind. I hope it lasts a thousand fucking years. Do not forsake me, oh Corona. Finally, something good happened to me. Instead of me busting my ass like uh, uh, Atlas Shrugged, pushing the Atlas up the fucking mountain for 28 motherfucking years. Not one good thing has happened to me to, me, to be able to enhance teaching, coaching, mentoring, QLA. Not one until Corona Rona. I didn't give up. If you had to coach you, you would have given up in a week. Because no prisoners! No fucking prisoners! Kill them all! That's what they had in common. No fucking prisoners! Kill them all! Metaphorically speaking, of course. That's so far from what you were taught. It's, the ant it's, it's beyond the antithesis. And now look at you. And then you're afraid to tell your family you're here. God almighty! That's pathetic. Success leaves clues. Failure also leaves clues. 
I could write a whole fucking bunch of books, a whole stack of books based on your failures. And the irony is when you tell, when you write them down, because you probably haven't written them down, because I ask you, you know, you know, what's the highest performance thing that you've ever done? Nothing. Uh, what's the highest, or uh, one of you, one's I'm shit and swimming. Or uh, one, we got a Taekwondo fuck here too. Uh, what's the highest performance thing your pre mother ever did? Nothing. What's the highest performance thing your uh, dad ever did? Nothing. Uh, and I, well, guess what? Nothing and nothing equals what? Nothing. It's not so hard, you know, to figure out, actually. And the reason why Corona is working is Gallup poll just before Corona came out. 87% of the world is unhappy. 80, I think it's 97. 87% of the world is unhappy. Then the, the study broke it down, unhappy about uh, life in general, unhappy about taxes, unhappy about the government, unhappy about their family. 87% of the planet. And then Corona, thank you, God, thank you. 85% of your financial success is due to now, they had to do a study at Carnegie uh, in, uh, Institute of Technology, which is a great school founded by Andrew Carnegie. 85% of your financial success is due to your personality and the ability to communicate, negotiate, and lead. Shocking, shockingly, only 15% is due to any technical knowledge. And you, because you're interested in the why, that's really because you want to know how it works, technology behind it, which is not necessary. In fact, it's even a fucking hindrance. As of 21 April, 57% of the U.S. GDP is due to government stimulus. What's going to happen when the government starts printing the money? You have no idea. You can't even imagine it. You don't, you, you don't have a motherfucking clue. Some of you use corona money to get here. I don't give a shit. I don't care. Well, I care if you robbed a bank and got caught. I care about that, but I don't care. Some of you that... Uh, know the stories behind um, uh, the founder of uh, Federal Express. Uh, the, um, he went to Vegas with his last $49,000 because he couldn't make payroll and he put it on black and won and then came home so he could make payroll for a couple few more weeks. Allegedly, he stole $2 million from his sister's trust. And when his sister sued him and they got to court six, seven years later, the judge said, you have to show damages. I mean, when you sue somebody, you got to have lost money. The stock that he gave them for the $2 million he took for them was worth 300 million bucks. And so the judge said, uh, dismissed in the interest of justice. I mean, you got no case. When he when he, um, when he he was uh, looking for money uh, to, to found uh, Federal Express, uh, he, um, they had expended all the money they had. And the, uh, he went to New York to, to talk to private equity funds. He needed $55 million. Um, and so he's pitching the last presentation, hit, not rumor, but legend has it, he gave after giving 15, 18 presentations to private equity. He told the people and the guy, one guy said, well, why are you in uh, Memphis, Tennessee? He says, and he made up a story. Well, the trade wind, there are no fucking trade winds in the United States. The trade winds in the morning, we could save on fuel going to the West. And then when the trade winds at night, they come back and save on fuel. And we can clear all the federal banks, Federal Express was uh, in uh, less than 24 hours. And because that fund that he was pitching, the best time to pitch a fund is when they're closing it up. I had to close in the next few weeks. They, they uh, invested the 55 million bucks and uh, the rest is history. The rest is history. They believed in the system. Almost all the people that you, you've heard of and you're going to, I mean, seen since you've been here and the people you're going to see for the rest of the week say different words. We follow Dan like it's the word of God. You heard the um, naval officer yesterday. I pushed the I believe but You don't believe. I can tell by the looks on your fucking face, you fucking cretins. You don't believe. Or you believe just because a naval officer with 100 IQ could do it. Tom, you got a higher than 100 IQ. I'm just making a better story, okay? Well, I'm not that smart. I can see it in your eyes. I can, I smell fear in this fucking room. Just because they did it doesn't mean you can do it, does it? I can line up a thousand fucking people and just because those thousand did it doesn't mean Pandeha can do it. As opposed, I probably scared more people with a 15 year old than I promoted. Well, he's a child prodigy. He must be a genius. He's a uh, Mozart. He's Beethoven. He's Einstein. Einstein was an idiot when he was 15. For those of you who don't know, couldn't even wipe his ass. They used to pin a tape to a nickel with uh, adhesive tape to his inside of his coat pocket because he couldn't find his way back from uh, his office at Princeton to his house in Princeton, New Jersey. This is when he was a mature man and a phone call cost the nickel in those days. He couldn't find his way home from the goddamn university, which is about 15 blocks to his fucking house. So he used to put the nickel in the thing. Operator, hi, this is Al Einstein. And then there's you. You should have rolled down the inside of your fat mama's leg. Why do some women when they have get pregnant gain 140 pounds and some gain 10 pounds. They had the will to drive the ambition. They maintained our QLA values no matter what. And in the most case, with one exception to the group, um, they were heavily, heavily disciplined and led structured lives as kids. Not as structured and disciplined as me, which you might have said that that's made an overreach on my father's part. But uh, a parent who will not 
face a child's tears today shall prepare for a flood of tears later. And boy, is that the goddamn truth. My buddies that didn't discipline their kids like we disciplined ours. Sex, drugs, and motherfucking rock and roll. Mostly drugs. And I, when my dad used to be, this hurts me more than, and I told you, I can't believe that this hurts me more than it hurts me, dad. Parents that are too soft on their kids today make it much harder. It's easy. Just like training dogs. I believe in tough love with dogs. It's probably not love, just tough. Children are natural mimics who act like their parents despite every effort to teach them good manners. You don't do what your parents told you, you do what you saw them do. And since they're all pigs, weak cunts, and then they grow up to be you. It's pathetic, it's sad, it's fucking sad. I, I don't think I ever looked like that, but anyway. And there I am out in front of my palatial mansion in East LA. I like guns because I saw my dad have guns. The LA Times didn't use this picture for the feature. It says it all really. They should have used that one. That's where my house used to be. So they tore it down because it was a crack haven. And from that, get back to that. I remember when hamburgers were at 15 cents. McDonald's, your boys from last night. We didn't have a McDonald's near where I live. You had, to, in fact, I think you had to go to San Bernardino. It was the closest McDonald's to uh, where I live because they would have burned it to the ground. San Bernardino was a little late. They burned it to the ground later, but they were a little late. They were a few years behind us. And they exposed me to scary shit when I was little. And these were the guidelines my parents used to raise me. It's too late for your kid. Nobody know how to ballroom dance in East LA except me. No one. Ballroom dance. Nobody took golf lessons in East LA except me. I took free golf lessons at Wilson Park. Nobody took play tennis in East LA but me. I took tennis lessons free at Wilson Park. I already told you they allowed me to believe in the uh, Santa Claus and Tooth Fairy and that shit till I was way old. We had no Spanish in our household. Nada. Because my mother and father didn't want me to speak Sp English with an accent like a fucking wet bath. No Spanish in the household. The book by Benjamin Spock, which I still recommend, about raising kids today, my mother found by accident. And I listened to classical music when I was a little boy. Classical. Beethoven. Does any of that compare to you? Probably very little. And I still was a tear burning shit down. God knows what I would have turned out if they hadn't done this. Now, you beat your kid, you go on, it get, gets on YouTube. There's a kid disciplining his boys for stealing. <laughs> Hit him again! The little fucker! Hit him! Beat the fuck out of him! I'm still in. What's wrong with you, Skip? Boom! Boom! I love it! Hit him again! Make him cry! Make him bleed! Get the fuck Hit him again! That's what should have happened to you. I used to get beat for not doing my homework. And look at how you turned out. And the irony is your parents are proud of some of you that haven't done a motherfucking thing in your entire life because the bar is so fucking low. Those people that I showed you the success stories, their parents did not as much shit as my parents did, but they had the bar high. There's only two ways out of the ghetto, the body was supposedly, education and sport. That's it. And I was a uncoordinated fuck that got bad grades. So I had no way out. The first high performance thing I ever did was become an officer by the grace of fucking Allah. And I honed those leadership skills from there. I'm a senior in high school and I figured out that I was good looking. And that was the, uh, that was the end of my priesthood days. And I became one of the great ass bandits that Southern California has, the United States of America has ever produced. I got more tail than fucking the Beatles. I got more tail than a toilet seat at a bus station. They used to say, pen you a fuck a snake if you hold his head still. Few of the bitches I fuck were snakes. Certainly reptiles of some order. But some of you in here said, well, what are your regrets? I didn't get laid enough. Well, fuck. Whose fault is that? That's certainly not one of my regrets. That's not even on my fucking list. I thought I was gonna run out of sperm at 32,000 hits which I was closing in on rapidly. I got asked to take girls to proms, junior proms and senior proms more than anybody in Los Angeles County. From about the 1st of May to the end of June, I was taking, uh, I was gonna say sluts, taking girls to prom. They came from Arcadia to ask me. They came from Glendale to ask me. They came from San Bernardino to ask me to take them. I used to have tails, tails and a top hat and a cane. I used to lift girls' dresses up with my cane and they loved it. Cause even then there were no men with balls. You're never gonna outperform your own self-image. And my self-image started with, I was a good looking guy. I got laid a lot. So, I mean, uh, you know, I can do a lot of shit that other people can't. That's how it started. And I've been there ever since. You will never outperform your highest image of yourself. Just as you will never outperform your highest goal. The kids that I went to school, we can't believe. When I went to my 20 year high school reunion, 
I was the master of ceremonies. I stood up there with a three-piece uh, linen suit like Rhett Butler and Gone with the Wind. You can't be Danny Pina. Uh, he's dead. He died in Vietnam. He died in a shootout in Riverside. And here I am. I've been pushing the envelope my whole entire life. First Rolls Royce when I'm 25. These are the goals I had. If you can't pump up your self-confidence and self-esteem, you will fail it. And the first persons or pers people that you should disassociate yourself with is your... I wish I could, you know, I wish it wasn't so, Joe, but it is.